During my postgraduate days, keratinization was one of the toughest topics for me. I didn't understand what is oral antibodies, what is keratohyalin granules. But now, after all these years, I am able to decode the process of keratinization to you, my dear students. And now, there is no need for you to face any troubles in understanding keratinization. Hi students, this is Dr. Vanati, Consultant Dermatologist. Today, I am going to talk about keratinization. I will describe the topic with uh, my introduction, definition, what are the three key elements of keratinization, what are odd bodies, keratohyaline granules, how desquamation occurs and the applied aspect of all these things. Introduction part, in keratinization, the cells from stratum basal has to go to stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum and stratum corneum. There are three types of cells in stratum basal. Stem cells, the stem cells, they have extensive proliferative potential because of which throughout our life the epidermis is being replaced by newer epidermis. And then the second set of cells are known as transient amplifying cells. They form the bulk of the cells of the stratum basal. Because of them, the stable self renewal of the epidermis is possible. The third set, they are known as post mitotic cells. These cells, they will not divide. Instead, they will differentiate. They are the one which are going to change their forms to from stratum basal to go to stratum corneum. Okay, before going to the three key elements, what is the definition? Characterization is a genetically determined, carefully regulated, complex series of metabolic and morphological changes, the end result of which we get dead keratinocytes, known as corneocytes. They are anatomically dead but physiologically functional. Along with that, we get the matrix protein, protein enriched cornified envelope and surface associated lipids. What are the three key elements in the process of keratinization? First thing is replacement of the cellular contents and the cellular organelles by compact proteinaceous cytoskeleton. The second thing is formation of protein enriched cornified envelope. The third thing is these dead keratinocytes they all should linked to each other like a, uh, it a multicellular compartment in which there is protein rich cells, dead cells in a, they are like a brick in a lipid rich matrix. They are like a mortar. This is the model of the stratum corneum. Okay. Before uh, we will go into the each step. For these things to happen, there are some uh, bodies which helps in keratinization. Odland bodies, otherwise known as cementosomes, membrane coating granules, lamellar granules or lamellated vesicles like that. They are lamellated in structure. They have a lamellar. They are usually seen in upper stratum spinosum. Near the Golgi apparatus, they move to the cytoplasm. When it is seen in the stratum granulosum, it moves towards the apex of the cells and it gradually secretes its content in the stratum granulosum and stratum corneum interface. For this thing to happen, we need calcium gradient. Calcium is usually low in stratum basal, very low in spinosum, highest in granulosum and literally nil in stratum corneum. This calcium gradient has to be maintained for the Odlan bodies to secrete it con its contents. Along with that, there are some ABC cassettes, ATP dependent ABC cassettes. They are also important in, in the discharge of the content of the cementosomes or the lamellar bodies into the intercellular space. Okay. What is present inside the lamellar bodies? Neutral sugars linked to proteins and lipids. Then, hydrolytic enzymes like lipase glycosidase, acid phosphatase and serine protease. Then some free fatty acids. These all present inside the lamellar bodies. The 
we have the ceramides has to be prepared from these neutral sugars so sphingomyelin and glucosyl ceramide they are converted into ceramides phospholipids are converted into free fatty acids these ceramides and free fatty acids are form like a crystalline sheet so the dead cells are present in the sheet of lipid matrix they are sealed literally so that there won't be any loss of water or something or it will maintain the hydration also the transglutaminase enzyme play a role in integrating these ceramides and free fatty acids into the cornified envelope in in detail this transglutaminase enzyme binds the glutamine and ceramides so it forms the uh, barrier effect it is important for the uh, lipid barrier effect of the cells in the stratum corneum and there are isopeptide forms which are formed between the glutamine and lysine they are important for the resilient nature of the cells of the stratum corneum the proteinaceous cells of the stratum corneum and then uh, these things happen with orderly bodies and the transglutaminase enzymes next we go to the keratohyalin granules keratohyalin granules contains loricrin involucrin filaggrin elafin etc so the loricrin is the major component of the uh, cornified envelope 80% of the cornified envelope is formed by the loricrin the structure of loricrin is very simple and it is important for the stability or flexibility of the stratum corneum next is involucrin the literal meaning of the term involucrin latin term meaning envelope so it is formed like a envelope then filaggrin filaggrin is very important filam filaggrin is otherwise known as filament aggregating protein so it is going to aggregate the keratin intermediate filament into a macro filament so okay before go to the function of the filaggrin let let us understand how keratin is present inside the cell keratin is the cytoskeleton imagine a cell is having a skeleton which is made up of keratin this keratin is important for the shape of the cell central position of the nucleus of the cell and also the mechanical stability of the cell keratin also is important for attachment of the neighboring cells with desmosomes i think you'll remember desmosomes will attach to placoglobin placoglobin to desmoplakin desmoplakin to keratin intermediate filament so these are the roles of the keratin this keratin filament has to be con condensed into a macro filament with the help of the filaggrin filaggrin is usually present as a precursor form as profilaggrin then it is converted into filaggrin and this uh, help in condensing the keratin filament after condensing the keratin filaggrin is degraded into urocanic acid and pyrrolidone carboxylic acid urocanic acid is a sunscreen natural sunscreen next to melanin and pyrrolidone carboxylic acid is a natural moisturizing factor these things are to be in harmony for proper keratinization so how desquamation occurs for desquamation to occur uh, acid phosphatase will digest the extracellular matrix steroid sulfatase steroid sulfatase the role of steroid sulfatase okay S cells in stratum corneum are linked to each other with help of corneodesmosomes the desmosomes which is present in stratum corneum is known as corneodesmosomes and with the help of cholesterol sulfate this cholesterol sulfate is hydrolyzed by the steroid sulfatase enzyme to free cholesterol this helps in desquamation the next thing is the corneodesmosomes the corneodesmosomes are disintegrated with the help of the enzyme serine protease so the cell has to form in a proper manner from the stratum basal to stratum corneum and they are, they are also have to be disintegrated with help of these enzymes for proper keratinization to occur end result of which we get a protein rich cells and lipid rich matrix though they look as a separate compartment they function complementary to each other the protein rich cells important for the hydration mechanical strength and uv protection 
and also if there is any inflammation it will start in the cells and the lipid rich matrix is important for the permeability function desquamation and also for the uh, antimicropeptide uh, is present inside in the, in the lipid then the toxin exclusion and absorption of any chemicals is needed is is done because of this lipid matrix okay what are the applied aspects of keratinization when there is a mutation or deficiency of filaggrin where it can lead on to ichthyosis vulgaris atopic dermatitis when there is a problem with transglutaminase 1 enzyme it can lead on to lamellar ichthyosis when there is deficiency of steroid sulfatase enzyme it can lead on to x linked recessive ichthyosis okay if there is any problem with serine protease so serine protease i told you important for the disintegration of the desmosomes in stratum corneum <clears throat> this serine protease is endogenously inhibited by some factor that is known as lymphoepithelial castle type inhibitor this inhibitor is coded by the gene spink5 when there is mutation in this spink5 this can lead on to netherton syndrome so in netherton syndrome uh, there is over activity of the serine protease like uh, chymotry chymotrypsin can also chymotrypsin is a serine protease it can uh, disintegrate desmoglein 1 in the stratum granulosum more so that lead on to the netherton syndrome characterized by hair shaft abnormalities atopy and ichthyosis i hope you have understood keratinization very well thank you for watching my video subscribe to my channel decoding dermatology turn on the bell icon for instant notification of my recent uploads please share this video like this video Thank you one and all.